Hi, I'm Mas Torgerson, and I'm the lead designer for C-Sharp. I want to welcome you to Microsoft Connect and share with you uh, some of the major features that are coming into C-Sharp 8, the first of which you can actually try out in the preview that's come out um, at the time of this event. So I'm going to show, uh, as many are in the preview, I'm going to show you in Visual Studio. I'm going to head over there right now. And uh, for the remainder, we'll take a quick tour in slides, and they will show up in later previews and, of course, in the uh, final product. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Null, uh, which has you know, caused many an, an exception, a Null reference exception in production code sometimes, and uh, which we really want to do a better job in C-sharp helping you avoid. So if you look at the code here, um, just a quick run through of the flow. I'm getting some subscribers. I'm getting the names of those subscribers through a helper method, which in turn is getting the name of each subscriber, which in turn is constructing a string based on the data, the strings that are inside of the, of the person class that, um, that is in the subscriber's um, collection. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, run this code and have some fun seeing all these nice names being printed out. And whoops, two came out. But uh, now, of course, we have a null reference exception. The null reference exception, if we can scroll a little here, uh, turns out that it is uh, in that code producing the string. And of course, it's the um, middle name that turns out to be null in the, the third person I was trying to render here. And therefore, indexing into it um, leads to a null reference exception. Well, wouldn't it have been nice if I had known ahead of time, not when my customer uh, sent in this uh, bug report? So that's exactly what um, uh, nullable reference types are about as a feature. Essentially, nullable reference types um, are about solving the problem of finding out where nulls should be and where they shouldn't be, and uh, tracking where they will be and won't be. So um, to make that, that concrete, um, let's start out by actually enabling the nullable reference types feature. And I need to enable it. I can enable it for the whole project. Here, I'm just going to do it in source code. Um, so you can turn it on and off. And the reason why it needs to be enabled, unlike all other c -sharp language features, is that it will give new warnings in existing code. And we don't want to do that to you when you upgrade, except when you opt into that. So you can see that when I type nullable enable here, I got a little green smudge here. That's a warning that showed up in my code because I enabled the new feature. So let's go and see what that warning is all about. It says that this constructor does not initialize the non-nullable property middle name. Well, non-nullable, what does that mean? Well, it means that when you turn this feature on, forevermore in C Sharp, we consider your, um, your reference types, your ordinary reference types to be non-nullable. We will stop letting you put null into them. So that seems a little harsh, maybe, but it does ensure that you won't get that null later, so it might not be such a bad choice. Um, so I'm not initializing it. Maybe I could initialize it um, with null instead and make that warning go away. And indeed, this warning goes away. I'm now initializing it. But I get another warning saying, you can't put null into this. It's a non-nullable reference type. Well, what if I want my nulls? They're, they're in the language for a reason. You can't just ban them. Um, and uh, sure enough, you can't have nulls. But now you have to own up to it. You have to express. We're expressing here in a public API, yes, we will have nulls. Beware, here might be nulls. Okay, So we've taken responsibility um, and told the rest of the world that nulls can be here. And now, on the receiving end, the line of code up here that is trying to index into the middle name, now we get a warning here saying, oh, there's possible uh, dereference of null. What can you do about that? Well, you can do what you always did. Um, uh, you can check for null before you dereference. So I can say if p.middleName is not equal to null before I return that, and you see that the warning goes away. Um, so essentially, the compiler is tracking um, where it's tracking p.middleName here and anything else nullable and tracking where might it actually be null. And you just checked and saw that it wasn't null, so on this branch here, it can't be null. Um, and that goes regardless of how you check for null today. Compiler is doing its best to track that and uh, remove those warnings when it sees that you have actually checked properly and ensured there's no null in there. Um, so another way that we could be doing this is that we could actually we could do it as a conditional uh, ternary expression. We could return 
that question mark this um, copy and paste put a colon so uh, bear with me as I reformat my code but you can see now on the two branches of the conditional um, one of them gets a warning and one doesn't uh, depending on whether the compiler sees that it might be null or not um, and of course on the one where it might be null we'll just remove it from the result and return a string that doesn't make use of, of the middle name that isn't there. Okay, so that's nullable reference types. The next thing I want to share is async streams. So um, in reality here, so I'm, I'm iterating over the subscribers. I'm kind of imagining this as sort of a live thing. Like whenever somebody subscribes, I get the name as part of a stream and then I, uh, or I get them as part of a stream, then I, I get the name of that and I print that out. So this happens over time asynchronously. We, we're lacking a notion of async uh, streams in C-sharp today, and, and we're doing something about that and integrating that into the language. So let's say that I get an async version of subscribers. And instead of being an enumerable now, then I async enumerable. That's like an enumerable. It can be for each-ish, but in, it's, um, uh, it's one that's async. So you sometimes have to await the next element. Um, and of course now I need to change get names to take an isync enumerable and now uh, for each won't work uh, because you can't for each over isync enumerables but you can await for each over them so that's a little bit of new syntax that lets you f uh, await um, uh, or let you for each over asynchronous streams of course I can only await if I'm inside of an async method um, but an async method can't return an enumerable it has to return something async, but that async thing can be another async enumerable. So now you're getting an asynchronous stream of the results here. And um, uh, if you look up here now, I have to also await for each the result of this call. Um, and I can only await if I'm in an async method, but I can make main methods async now as of C-sharp 7.2. And so now, um, my code is back to working again, and if we try running it, um, you can see that um, as these names trickle in over time, the, um, um, you know, the results are produced and printed out, and that for each loop is just sort of awaiting for every round with some delay. And there we go, we've iterated the list um, that's produced, and the, and the program terminates. So that's async streams. The last feature I want to show you directly in code um, it's a tiny little one, um, but uh, we think it's going to be very useful. Inside of my fake service here that I've been using all along, I'm actually creating an array of people and then give, yielding that back out. Now, um, wouldn't it be nice if I could easily specify a subrange, a slice, if you will, of that array? And you can do that now with, um, with the range syntax. So I can say I only want to get from one to three um, out of this array and actually uh, there's a syntax for saying well I want one from the beginning and one from the end and then I'm sort of slicing off the, um, the uh, uh, outermost elements um, so the hat there means from end and that's the um, that's the async uh, or sorry that's a ranges uh, feature in C sharp and that's pretty much it for the preview so let's go back to the slides and see some of the features that will show up uh, in subsequent releases. So um, we saw this code here in the, in the, um, um, in the example before uh, where I'm choosing between whether the middle name is null or not. But actually the first name or the last name should probably also be able to be null. Um, it's not um, always that people have first names or last names or maybe they have the names but they weren't recorded here or they didn't want to give them or whatever. So we should expand this logic to more like a switch over all the different combinations. And you can now do that using what we call recursive patterns. So I'm switching over a tuple of the three uh, strings here. And then in my cases, I can put a pattern that also looks like a tuple. We call this a tuple pattern. Uh, but inside of it, it has other patterns, which are then used to match against the elements uh, of the tuple. So here I'm matching where there are non-null strings. Um, and here's the case for matching when the middle one is null 
Um, of course, we should also think about when the last name is the one that's null, or, you know, when both are null, or actually when the first name is null, or, you know, there's actually eight different cases here. And so your switch gets kind of clunky now. Um, and we've long felt that switch was a little long in the tooth in terms of being heavy syntactically. So uh, we decided now's the time to add switch expressions, which is sort of a spiffed up version of switches that are an expression form. So here's that same code written with, um, with switch expressions. So the switch expression here is everything but the return and the semicolon. It has an expression, then the switch uh, keyword after that, so it composes better with other expressions. Um, and then a list of cases that are just a pattern, an arrow, and an expression for the result. And I think it kind of looks nice here that you can do these one-liners, you can do this tabular sort of layout, and really see, um, you can sort of visually check that we uh, handle all the cases here. But beyond that, actually, um, because an expression has to produce a result, the compiler will actually check uh, that you don't get to the end with some of the possible values not actually um, uh, being handled. So the compiler will give you a warning if you're missing some. And if you, um, if you ignore that warning, uh, it'll generate code to throw an exception. An exception that says, uh, well, you ran out at the end of an, a switch expression. You can do that. So uh, that's switch expressions. Um, tiny little but very neat little syntactic sugar feature. If I'm already saying up here that this array is an array of persons, why do I have to repeat the type every time in general, when I'm in a context where the type is clear, why do I have to repeat myself, say it's a big generic type or something, when I knew up the object? Can't you just infer that? Well, now we can. You don't have to specify these guys. Uh, you can just, when it's given from context that these should be persons, you can just uh, write the new expressions like this. And then finally, default interface members are a feature that um, helps make it easier to evolve interfaces. Once you've published an interface, um, you're already locked in because if you add another member to it, your implementers will break. Um, but uh, we're now adding the ability to add members with actually with a method body, which is a little unusual for interfaces, but it's going to be really useful because now uh, existing implementers like console logger down here, they can get that default implementation without having to change. And therefore, you've added that member without breaking them. Of course, um, new implementations will likely uh, provide their own implementation. Um, so um, this is mostly a feature just to make sure that you are compatible. That was everything. Uh, have a great connect. Thank you very much.